So in this tutorial, we're gonna have a look at the trim tool in Final Cut Pro 10. Now, if you've begun to work in Final Cut Pro 10 already, then the tool you've probably used to drag your clips down to the timeline to change your edit points, and the one most people start with is the selection tool here. Now, the selection tool allows you to shuffle clips around. So for instance, we can grab a clip, we can move it to a different location, we can grab an edit point and trim that edit point. So you can see here when we're trimming with a selection tool, we're moving one edit point. Now the trim tool works a little differently. So we're going to jump down to the trim tool here and have a look at what we can do with this. So when we select an edit point with the trim tool, if we click on that edit point, you can see instead of one edit point being highlighted yellow. So previously we had the out point for this first clip selected. Instead, we have both in and out points selected. So if you look at the viewer, when we begin to drag this, you'll see that we get two clips up on screen. So what's happening now as we move this edit point is we're changing the out point of the first clip and the in point of the second clip by the same amount. So if you look at the end of our sequence in the timeline, as I'm dragging this half a second, one second to the right, it's changing that edit point, but it's not changing the duration of my timeline. So I'm dragging this to the left and it's shortening the first clip, but lengthening the second clip. And then the same to the right, I'm lengthening the first clip and shortening the second clip. So that's the first edit you might do with the trim tool. Now the next edit we can do is working with one clip. And in this example, we're gonna do a slip edit. So if I click and hold, you can now see that I have two edit points selected, but they're from the same clip. So the in point of this third clip and the out point of this third clip. So when I drag this, you can see that what we're getting is the in point is changing and the out point is changing. Okay, so we can decide where we want to cut the out point for that clip. So if we have a look at this example here, you can see if I scrub across, we have this skateboarder coming up to do a move here, but the edit's not quite cut in the right place, so we don't see him land the skateboard. So if I wanna keep that clip in place, keep the duration the same, then if I click in the middle here and begin to drag to the left, you can see I can see that out point changing. And so I can keep going until I see him do that spin and we can keep going so that the end point is just at the start of the spin. So we get a nice flow from that clip, just like so. So we see the move and then we can cut to the next clip. So the trim tool is doing something quite different to the selection tool. And there's one other thing that I'll show you here, which is the ability to cut the video and audio within our edit separately. So if I come down to my audio timeline here and just double click, it's gonna expand out the audio for that clip. And if I double click on my previous clip, you can see it's gonna expand out the audio for this clip. So what we're gonna do here is set up what's called a J or an L cut. And basically what that means is that we're either cutting the video before the audio for that clip cuts, or we're cutting the video after the audio is cut. Now, this is normally nice in a dialogue situation where you wanna have someone speaking, and then you cut to another person and see their response. So we can use it in that kind of situation. Or if we're showing some action and then we're cut into an interview, but we wanna keep some of that sound from the previous clip overlapping. We can also do the same with the audio. So if I click on this edit point, you can see I'm trimming both those edit points, the out point of the first clip and the in point of the second clip at the same time as I drag left and right. So the trim tool is a really useful tool when you're working with these clips. And if I double click here, it will dock that waveform back into place and I can do the same for the second clip double click and it docks that back into place now the other scenario in which you might use this is on a connected clip so let's just grab our selection tool and I'm just going to duplicate a couple of clips by holding down shift and selecting them both and then holding down the alt key to duplicate them up here okay and now with the trim tool if I come to this edit point here you can see I'm still only selecting one edit point there but I want to actually select them both so what I need to do is turn these into a group. So I'm gonna grab my selection tool again and just grab these two clips and hold down Command and tap G. And that's gonna group these clips together in a connected storyline. So now if I jump to my trim tool on this timeline, I can drag that edit point and make the same kind of edits on my connected group as I can on the previous edit. And this is great if you're syncing stuff with sound in the layer below, you can see it snapping to my edit points. So if you're trying to sync a cut for a music video on the layer below, and that's a really handy edit to be able to do without changing the duration of those clips on the overall timeline. So you're keeping any other edits down the timeline intact because we're not rippling that edit down the timeline as we are with the selection tool. And one last thing before we finish up here, and that is that we can use some of the shortcut keys on the keyboard to nudge our edits left and right, which can 
give you the opportunity to do those really fine tuned edits. So if I highlight an edit point here and I look for the comma and period on my keyboard, then I can nudge that edit point to the left or to the right by one frame. Okay. If I hold down shift and tap on the comma or period, it will nudge it by 10 frames at a time either way. So the comma and period are just to the right of the M key on your keyboard and you can use it to nudge those clips and you can use it to nudge those edit points left one frame at a time or right one frame at a time or again by holding down shift by 10 frames at a time. Okay, so that's a really handy way of fine tuning your edits with the trim tool. I hope you found that useful. Uh, I hope you get a chance to sign up and check out some of my other Final Cut Pro 10 tutorials. And if you have any questions, then please don't hesitate to send me a tweet at Ben Hustle, and I look forward to seeing you on the next tutorial.